Just look at that picture. And I want you to, in your mind, say to yourself, what does that picture say to you? Amen. Amen. Today is the 1st of September. It's a new season. It's called spring. Amen. Amen. It's the start of autumn in the north. They're on their way to winter. And we're on our way to summer. New opportunity, new life. Amen. If you go up the west coast here, you'll see how much life there is out there. Amen. Uh, it's got more flowers out there than on Mamakasis. Attire, amen. amen. It's daisy time. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for us to have a new life because we're lingering in our old lives. Amen. amen. Last week I spoke about being a true Christian. Am I correct? Yes. Do you remember? Who in the house went and looked at one John this week? You don't have to answer me. You know if you have or you haven't. Amen. Amen. Who has gone and listened to the word again? You don't have to listen to the live show as we run it here. I copy just the word into the YouTube video side. Amen. 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 Take the opportunity to go and listen. You need to hear. Mama Shupi said you need to open your inner ear. You need to hear, not with your head, but with your heart. Amen. Amen. You see, the church today is really in danger. <coughs> and we don't seem to even grasp that. It's not in danger because God does not have control. Huh? It is in danger because we, the church, have lost control. Amen. Who's the church? Us. Me and you. Not the house. Forget about the house. Everybody wants a house. No. You are the house. You are the temple. Is your temple clean? Or are you busy with stuff that makes it unclean? What makes it unclean? What the word says makes it unclean. I did not mean to not get ahead of myself this morning, Sister Stereo. Do you agree? So we have, and I spoke about people coming into the house, <coughs> pretending to be children of God. In voice and in knowledge, they seem to be children of God. But in heart, they may as well be evil himself. Because their agenda is not to build. Their agenda is to steal, kill, and deceive. You see what do you mean? I mean that, really. They kill your faith. They steal your happiness. And they deceive you into believing stuff you shouldn't be believing. <laughs> A trait of Satan himself. We have to be careful and we have to learn to discern. And the only way to discern is to have the knowledge of God's word. Because that's Amen. the only way that you will understand who God is and what his passion is for your life. You know, it makes me really happy when a young man can come up and he can come and quote scripture and tell you something about life. Yeah. Amen. Well done. Don't stop. Grow in stature, pastor. But what you must remember, the pastor is the guy that carries the sandbags. Now. It's not the guy that arrives in the BMW. People carry his Bible and then his long tour behind him because he's a manier. Now, he's not a manier. He's a servant, just like Jesus displayed. Amen. Amen. Title is nothing. We heard it on 
Thursday night or Friday night, I can't remember which night it was, when the UK had the leadership conference. Anybody tune in? Amen. Please, when we post for UK, feel free to join in. Amen. Amen. All leaders. If you're not on the group and you want to be, just shout. We'll put you. Amen. Amen. The scary thing is what happens in the time behind the scenes and how people's lives are affected spiritually when these people operate. Operate. Spirit of Jezebel. Né? Own agenda. They want to take over. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not that bad. Eh? You can smile too. <laughs> People look like somebody has stolen their breakfast. Amen. You see, when people come into the house, they come in and they pretend to, to want to be here to do the right thing. Yet, they are using you to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Whether it's for their wallet or whether it's for their selfish need. Amen. Amen. And then when they are found to be wrong, they won't even apologize. They will continue on their wrong path. And they will never live a blessed life until they repent. Until they realize that what they are doing is wrong. And you know what? It doesn't matter how hard they try. They are exposed every time. With God, the truth is always revealed. Amen. God shows you. God tells you. Be careful. Are you listening? God is telling you today. Be careful. God told you last week. Who are you associating with? Who are you building your life with? Who are you falling in love with, young people? Is she the same cloth as you? Is he the same cloth as you? What does the word say? Amen. Amen. You see, when they come into the house, just like Satan, they may even know the word better than you. <laughs> they may even understand the word better than you. And they know just where to tickle. They know just where to touch. I want you to do some homework this week. <coughs> and I think I'm going to check it. Whether you come next Sunday or not, I'm going to contact you and say, take a photo and send me your list. Amen? How's that? Homework. I'm like the teacher at school now. Man. You remember those those people that used to teach you? They used to check on you. In the old school days, ah, if you didn't do your homework, what happened? Office scene. Eh? Go and smile for the, for, the, for the headmaster. He opens the cupboard. I had an honorary place in there. I could choose my own stick. Yeah. Hmm? And then he'll warm your heart and send you to the classroom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go and sit carefully in some quiet time and make a list. What in my life? I'm not seeing anybody making that. What in my life is of God? And what in my life is of man? Which side of the list is going to be the longest? Is there going to be two sides of the list? Those are the things that you can answer. And then you must take those things that are not of God, of man. And you need to consider what benefits and what does not benefit. And what can I incorporate into God's way of things? And what can I not incorporate? And so we cut some things out of our lives that make us fall and stumble. Amen. Amen. Can we do that? It's for your own benefit. Mm. It can only make you feel better, look better, do better, speak better, believe better, and have better faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I continue, I have two family members this month. 
that are having their birthdays. I call it in modern times upgrade day. Yeah? First is Mama Kasi on the third. Happy birthday for today, tomorrow and the next day and the rest of the week. May God bless you, keep you and continue to do great things and help me to stay in line. Amen. And then young brother Kamo on the fourth, the day after. Blessing to the house, even if I give him a hard time. But I only give him a hard time because I want the best for him. 94 point. What? Percent for what? Did you hear that? That's what I want from him. Why? Because his future lies right ahead of him right now. Grade 11, time for people to look and see who are we going to give some favor to, to study, wherever. Amen? Amen. So I'm very happy I'm going to get lots of things this week because I have two birthdays this week. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. You know, they, they always say when it's your birthday, you must give something. Amen. Amen. Right. So let's get back to business. By the way, it's nice to have a small chest like this. Mm. Because when we go, you so scared just to... By the way, just sit there, just sit there. So this is the opportunity for me to come. On Saturday, we are having a plan. Whoever wants to come and join us for a plan, come and join us for the plan. So it's uh, how will we celebrate it? Both of our birthdays by just sharing a plan with you guys. Come, you are more than welcome. The time is 2 o'clock on Saturday. No, 1 o'clock. Okay, I've been upgraded one hour. <laughs> one o'clock. Not three o'clock. If you come three o'clock, the door is locked. Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. September. Hey! 10th of September. Mama Bona. But that's next week's celebration. Amen. Hey, lots of people in September. I also have a daughter-in-law that's on the 13th. Oh, and the 13th is my... 21st anniversary. 21st anniversary. Officially. Married. 21 years. But we've been together for 24 years. 25 years. 25 years. No, 24. 24, 24 years. So 24. And uh, we were in a relationship for three years. Yeah, before we go. Yeah, before Amen. All right, let's get back yes. to the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I was telling you about people that come into the house. And when these people have come and they've destroyed, some people question their faith. Some people reject their faith. Some people even leave the church. Amen. Amen. We see an year of church splits. We see people leave and say, I don't need to go to church to go to hell. And make all sorts of things. We see so many Christians that we talk to, for those of us that talk to other people, that they're not even prepared to listen to you. They don't want to hear anything about Christianity. Amen? Because of people like that. And there are many people like that. And I do not speak judgment. I speak the truth. It's time for us to reveal the truth. And we need to take people like that to task. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We need to make them understand that their ways are wrong. Yeah. That it's not acceptable <laughs> to say yes, but yet you are no. Mm. And some don't even say yes when it's maybe. We need to get, we need to get closer to God. Mm. The word is very clear. 2 Timothy 3.5 says... Holding to a form of outward godliness, pretense, huh? pretense, outward godliness. We show a picture, but inside it's different. Religion, although they have denied its power for their conduct, nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep away from them. 
Our purpose is to preach the gospel to those who are not brothers and sisters. Our purpose is not to associate with them. Yes, I've got to work with him. Yes, I may have to deal with him. Yes, I may need to talk to him and ask something. But it's not somebody I need to be in close relationship with. Paul said when you get to the door, knock on the door and do what? Tell them about God and Christ. If they reject you, dust your feet and leave. Amen. Do not associate. Do not go in and have something to eat. Amen. Amen. I then spoke about 15 things that will indicate your true relationship with your Father in heaven. All of them related to a close relationship with a desire for God in everything we do. A desire that helps us seek and find God in our lives. Giving us the power to become overcomers in everything. There's nothing that you cannot overcome. There's nothing that you cannot succeed in. We give up far too easily. We see people that have been successful and expect the recipe to work the first time. Can you bake? When you bake the cake the first time, did it bake nicely? How many times did you have to bake it before it worked? Two. Hey, you were quick, huh? Some of us have to do it three, four, five, six, seven. I found over there, 20 times. Businessmen were not successful on their first time. Yeah. Amen. 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 It comes down to the word. The word. Not the Bible. The word. Obedience. That's what it comes down to. Are you obedient? And it equates to promotion and blessings. Don't believe me? Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2 says, Blessings from Gerizim. Now it shall be, if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of His commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and take overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. It's in the Bible. Listen. Mm. Hear. Listen. Be alert. Be awake. Hear God's voice. Amen. Amen. So the 15 headings, and I'm not going to go through them. I'm just going to read them to you. It says, and you need to make this part of your life. Mm. <coughs> fellowship with God. How much time do you spend in fellowship with God? Do you wait for Sunday to come and worship or do you do fellowship with God all the time? Every opportunity you get, there should be fellowship. Obey God from your heart. Have a need for obedience. Not I have to. I have to do many things. Doesn't mean it's from my heart. I have to go to work. Doesn't mean I, work is everything. No, work's not everything. It's my sustenance and my health that God provided me with so that I can provide for my house and my family. Amen. Amen. Hunger for God's word. How hungry are you? How much time are you spending in God's word? How many times have you read through 1 John this week to gain understanding and see what God is saying to you? Just like today's word. How many times are you going to read through it, study it, saturate it, <coughs> memorize it? Amen. We are talking about come back. Come back to reality. Come back to true Christianity. Come back to being in the right place. Coming back to asking yourself, who's in my boat? Why a boat? Because when you're isolated out there, like in that picture, nothing can save you when the boat sinks, except Jesus. Separate, live separate lives from the world. You cannot do as the world says. You can only do as God says. Confess Christ boldly to the world. Spread the gospel. Long for Jesus to come again. 
suffer rejection because of my faith. When people hear you put Jesus first, they don't want to associate with you anymore. Ask me. I know. Love fellow Christians. God answers my prayers. When you're obedient to God, when you're in the inner circle, God answers your prayers. When you're disobedient, why should God answer your prayer? You're not even looking at Him, except when you're desperate. We don't look at God when we're desperate. We look at God when we are in favor, when we are blessed, when things are going really well. That's when we look even harder to God in thankfulness. Discern truth by the Bible. What you say, can you confirm it for me in the Word? Let's take a favorite one in today's life. Tattoos. Get yourself a tattoo. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Yeah. Finish and clap. There's no argument. Go read the Word. But I have tattoos and I'm a Christian. Yes, you got those tattoos before you were a Christian, isn't it? So, doesn't matter. You've repented. But now you're Christian and you're putting a tattoo. What does the word say? What is it that you are saying to God? No, it's modern time. No, it's got nothing to do with time. The Bible was there yesterday. It's here today and it's still going to be there tomorrow. And it's still going to be the same just as your God. He never changed anything. The covenant he made with Abraham, he never changed it. He fulfilled it. Jesus didn't come to take away the Ten Commandments. It's in the Word. You want to debate it with me? Bring the Bible and show me in the Word where it says it doesn't. I'll show you where it says it does. Amen? Amen. Enjoy the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Who's enjoying the Holy Spirit? Who's close enough to God and living a life where you can have a discussion with the Holy Spirit walking down the street? Whilst you're busy doing your work at work. While you're busy cooking. While you're having a bath. While you are lying in bed thinking about your day. Amen? Amen. This is real stuff, people. And we need to get there. If you haven't experienced this, it's time for you to focus. And it starts with dedication. Read the word. Ask the question. Speak to the pastor. Speak to your brother and sister. Ask somebody to be your prayer partner. Ask somebody to be your Barnabas to help you on your difficult path. But discern who you choose. Trust Jesus Christ as my king. Remember, these are 15 points I discussed last week. You can go and listen to the sermon. It's on YouTube. Persevere in victory over the world. We have to beat the world. How? When Jesus lives in our lives, we overcome the things of the world. Have assurance of my salvation. If you die right now, if you fall over in that chair, are you going to heaven? Have you forgiven those who have trespassed against you? Have you lived the life in accordance to what Jesus says we should live as? Are you doing the right thing? Are you loving your neighbor? Or are you cursing him? Have you forgiven that person that did something bad to you? This is all stuff that gets you there or makes you fail. Mm. Because when you have truly given your life to Christ and He has come to live in you and it's no longer you who live, you no longer do those things of the world. And yes, the flesh will do some stuff. But you will discern and fix it. You will say, God, I have failed. Help me. I took another drink. I smoke another packet of cigarettes. Whatever it is that makes you fall into sin. It's not for me to judge what you think is sin, what's not. God will tell you. There are some things in the Word of God that specifies what is wrong and what is right. But there are smaller things we do that separate us from God every day. Amen. Amen. So today I want to ask you this. What is your daily routine? Amen. 
Amen. Say to your neighbor, what is your daily routine? Say to the other one. How do you start your day? How do you work through your day and how do you end your day? These are important things. So if you're in a boat traveling to a destination and the journey is treacherous and full of unexpected occurrences, how are you dealing with all of that? that and most of them are bigger than you. Amen. Amen. You yourself, are you bigger or smaller than Satan? You cannot beat Satan by yourself, so you must be smaller. Amen. Only in Jesus does he become your footstool. Only in Jesus do you overcome Satan. Amen. Amen. How are you dealing with all of, of that and most? Oh, yeah, I've said that already. Sorry. It's like a huge storm of trouble. So I ask you, who is in your boat whilst you face the storms of everyday life? And forget about the water. Man. We're not talking about a sea storm. We're talking about our lives. When our mind starts running and we work ourselves into an absolute ball of anxiety, disaster, desperation, grabbing hold of whatever we can and every, any, any opportunity that comes our way. Amen. Amen. Who is it that's going to still that storm and stop you and say to you, Bachabiki, do you know what that means? Wait a bit. Bachabiki. Do you know you get a, bo a bush that is called a Vachabiki? Hmm? And you know what's the interesting thing about a Vachabiki bush? It has a thorn like this. You see? So when you walk past the thorn hooks you. Vachabiki, ne? But there's another thorn here waiting for you. So when you jerk back, it stabs you again. Ne? Think about it. You are stopped and spiked. Jesus stops you and spikes you into the right direction. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Amen. Amen. Bachabiki. Slow down. Stop. Let's read the scripture. It's our main scripture for the day. Mark 4 verse 36 to 39. Kamo knows the scripture. He preached on it a little mm -hmm. while ago. Yeah. And it says in verse 36, So leaving the crowd, I want you to, to see the picture. Ne? They left the crowd. Eh? They left the busyness. They left the, the, the noise. Amen. They left the world. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. They took him with them. Take your brother and sister and Jesus with you. Amen. Amen. Just as he was in the boat. There's no time to change, put on a suit, put on makeup, do the hair. Just get going when the time is necessary. To go to your quiet place. To go to a place away from everything. That storm. That noise. He was... Or they, just as he was in the boat. And other boats were with him. And a fierce windstorm began to blow. And waves were breaking over the boat. So that it was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern. Stern. Asleep with his head on a sailor's leather cushion. And they woke him and said to him. Teacher. Do you not care that we are about to die? And he got up and sternly rebuked the wind and the sea. Hush, be still, muzzled. And the wind died as it had grown weary. And there was at once a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Amen. 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 Let's just pray at this stage. Father, I just thank you for your powerful word, Father. I thank you that we can take a moment and, and just hear within ourselves the importance of finding you in our lives, Father, that we can hear today how important it is to stop 
in a time of crisis. To stop when the noise is too much. To stop when there's just too much for us to handle and call your name for it. We thank you. I ask that it's all of you, none of me. We welcome your Holy Spirit in the house and we praise your name. And all that believe said, Amen. 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 So now I'm going back to that picture. What do you see? I see somebody that has found his peace. I see somebody that knows his value, the power within, mm. to steer that boat wherever he wants to steer it. And nothing is going to prevent him from getting to his destination. Amen. Amen. Are you on that boat? Are you in control because Jesus is your way? Amen. 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 We live in time of obscurity, end times. Fact. Anybody want to dispute that? If you know the word, you'll know that we live in the end times. But the end times can be tomorrow or in the next thousand years. We don't know. It's God's time. But we don't run our lives concerned. I said you should desire end times. Mm. Nah? We should be ready. If it happens tomorrow, it must be the biggest thing that happened in your life. Amen. Amen. No more pain. No more food. Why? Because I'm spiritual. I'm going to live with my Father in heaven. Amen. We are present, presented with so many options and they shout out loud to our flesh, isn't it? <coughs> Every time we think we are in still water, there is a ripple and a little breeze that comes up disturbing our peace. Amen. Amen. We have to remain unwavering and receive the word of God for what it means and remain rooted in it. Every day I see how Christians are living watered down lives, bending the truth to accommodate a do-as-you-please lifestyle. Just look around you. And those that you know that say they are Christian, what is it that they are doing? The way they behave, what they accept. Amen. Amen. And this is not going away. You will even be more challenged from tomorrow because it's been highlighted to you. Other Christians are doing it. It's okay. Whatever justifies sin will be decorated as acceptable. Yet the word is clear about it. You have to read it with understanding and accept what it says. We don't debate the word. We accept what it says because we have faith that it's the truth. The moment you start debating the word, then there is a doubt. Amen. Amen. 2 Peter 3.16 says, speaking about these things as he does in all of his letters. Who? Paul. Who's saying it? Peter. He's saying, speaking about these things as he does in all of his letters, in which there are some things that are difficult to understand, which is untaught and unstable, who have fallen into error, twist and misinterpret, just as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. Twisting the scriptures, bending it, make it suitable for our lives so we can live as we please. But if you remain true, there is one thing that we can be assured of, and that is God's love never fails. He will remain in you. John 8, 32 to 32 says, the truth will make you free. <clears throat> so Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. When are you truly his disciple? Only when you are in his word and obedient. And you will know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. Again, we have a, perf a perfect example in the word of great men of God who are not perfect or sinless, but God remains with them because they were faithful. Joseph. Daniel, Abraham, David, no matter how many times David failed, God lifted him up. 
God forgave him. Why? Because he was faithful and repented from his sins. There's a good example of Saul. God was with him, and because Saul did what? He wandered into his own power. He, he adapted a life. He, 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 he made it good for him and thought himself to be all-powerful. And God left him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you a David or are you a Saul? You must decide. And you must heed the warning. Mm. You see, not so long ago, our world was brought to a standstill by something unseen and unknown. We know what that is. COVID. It stopped us. During this time, we have seen so many people living in fear and filled with all kinds of worry. <coughs> For those of us that like social media, we would take anything as true there. Destruction, disaster, and everything that anybody would post there, we would say, look at the world, it's the end of the world, da 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 da, -da and carried on. Amen? Amen? Yet none of that ever happened. It was a disease. You see, worry is the start, is the seed that germinates destruction. Yeah. Stay away from it. Stop living with anxiety. Your problem is never bigger than God. God can take care of any problem. What is the real source of your pain, your grievance? Have you forgotten the grace that God has shown you, the provision what, that God has given to you, the mercy and kindness that God has washed over you? My dear friend, God has not changed. I've already said that. He is still on the throne. He is large and in charge. Again, what does the word say? Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Note it down. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight to understand. All about what I spoke about this morning. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and rec recognize Him. And He will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Take, for instance, what happened in Mark 4.35. I read it to you just now, man. our main scripture. That evening, Jesus and his disciples decided to depart from the crowd, and they went by boat to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The Bible says that a sudden and furious storm came upon them, and a huge wave broke over the boat. In the midst of all of this, asleep on a cushion on the boat's stern was Jesus. Get the picture. Get the, tell your neighbor, get the picture. Get the understanding. So I say to you, if you've never been on a boat when the sea is rough, you will maybe not understand. Né? But when the sea is rough, that boat is going everywhere. And you're going, zhu, 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 and this is going, whoa, whoa, because your stomach is upset. Né? And here Jesus is sleeping in the boat, peacefully. No worries, no concern, nothing. Why? Because his father is in charge and he knows it. And what does the disciples do? Their world starts turning like the sea is turning. It's becoming unstable like the sea makes the boat unstable. And they're running around and they, they are full of anxiety. Isn't that exactly what we've been talking about? And then they go to the source because the source was in the boat with him. But you don't have the source in the boat with you that you can see. But you have the source in the boat with you in your heart. And you need to tap into that in your heart and say, stop. Jesus is in charge. He's here. He's in my heart. The Spirit is here to guide me. Help me. Call the name of Jesus. That scripture that says there's power in the name. Wait till you experience the power of that name when you call on it. Amen. Amen. He's asleep in the boat. And yet they are waking him and saying, don't you care if we, do, we drown? They're not even saying to him, Father, you are here, you're in control. Give us peace. No, they're saying, don't you care? It's not that he doesn't care. He just knows it's okay. Nothing is going to happen. So if you get peace in your heart, why are you still stressing? 
Why are you still feeling nervous? Amen. You know that saying they have in English, they say, who rocked your boat? Amen. In our lives, Satan rocks our boat. Satan makes the boat unstable, brings the storm, the wind, and all the bad things into our lives. And we need to discern and say, get in your place, Satan. God reigns here. Amen. Amen. Jesus got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, quiet, be still. There's the key. I need to quiet myself down and be still. Go and think, take the word of God, say the name of Jesus to get yourself in the place where you belong. Quiet, be still. Say to your neighbor, quiet. Say to the other neighbor, still. still. Say again, quiet. quiet. Still. still. Amen. Amen. The wind died down and it was completely calm. Take note of the absolute power displayed by Jesus. Something we need to absorb. When God speaks, it happens. But then the word says, he's given you that same power, isn't it? The word says, if you speak, it shall be. Be careful what you say. What you bind in heaven will be bound in earth. What you loose in heaven will be loose on earth. So do you have the same spoken word power as God? Yes. But only... If he's backing you up. But even Satan can make you say things and then they happen. Why? Because God gave you the power. Wake up in the Monday morning. Oh, today is going to be terrible. What happened? Today is terrible. But when you say, ah, oh, today is going to be powerful, blessing. Everything good happens in your life. And you don't even notice the small things that are bad. But because we speak bad things into life, we see all the bad things that happen and we don't see the one good thing that happened. Mm -hmm. But all that we should linger on is the one good thing that happened and not bother about the bad things that happened. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Linger on the one good small thing that happened in your life today and forget about the bad things that happened and overpowered your life. They don't matter because tomorrow God will set them right. Tomorrow, God will take judgment on those who trampled on you, who did bad things to you. He says, vengeance is mine. Amen. The wind died down and it completely calmed. Absolute power. Then Jesus said to his disciples, why are you afraid? Do you still not have faith? Let it sink in. Let it go right inside there. Get your understanding corrected. The Bible says that the disciples were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. <coughs> Isn't this just how we all are in life? You have Jesus. You have God Almighty's backing. Yet you still doubt. No. Give it to Him and leave it with Him. Let Him sort it for you. That when you say to God, here's my problem, let it be the last time it leaves your lips. Let it be the last time that you think about it. You will just suddenly in five years time say, oh, Look, God resolved my problem. I even forgot about it. Why? Because you have peace in your heart. No matter what happens, God will take care of you. Whilst you're down in the valley of disaster, God will take care of you and bring you out. And you will look back when he's brought you out and you'll say, Whoo! like that, that poem about footsteps in the sand. Eh? And the query on that poem is, but God, when I, uh, I was in my trials and tribulations, why is there only one set of footsteps? And what was God's answer? Because that, that's the time when I carried you. You're only seeing my footsteps. 
The account of Mark chapter 4 isn't very long, but it contains seven important points for us to take to heart during difficult times. The first one, following Jesus does not exempt you from storms. Because you've given your life to Christ doesn't mean there's not going to be trials and tribulations. Because you've given your life to Christ, things are not going to be smooth. In fact, it will probably be even worse. Because when your lips produ produces the sound of Jesus, Yahweh, Satan is on to you. Because he wants to prevent you from saying that powerful name. Amen. Remember, the Son of God healed the sick, fed the hungry, and performed astonishing miracles in the boat and across the sea. And yet, still a storm came. Two, storms are a part of life. In fact, you're going to, fail to face trials and tribulations all the time. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 6.33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The truth is echoed in 1 Peter 4.12, which says, Do not be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. Amen. Amen. Number three, Jesus with, will be with you in the storm. <clears throat> Jesus was there in the boat with the disciples in the midst of a furious storm. Jesus never promised, God never promised that there wouldn't be storms in your life. He promised to be with you in that storm. Psalm 107 says, He hushed. Now, you know what stands out for me here before I read this? The Psalms were written before Jesus. Yet it speaks of Jesus so clearly here. It says, in verse 29, one of, uh, Psalm 109, verse 29. He hushed the storms to a gentle whisper so that the waves of the sea were still. Eventually, number four, eventually Jesus will calm the storm. You continue to be faithful. You continue to walk the path. Jesus will calm the storm. Be patient. Sometimes, if the storm does not come, you need to ask God what you are not doing that you should be doing. Amen. Number five, faith is developed in the storm, not during the calm. It's in our challenges that our faith is challenged. It's in our challenges that our faith grows. It's in our challenges that we see God performing miracles. Storms are often a test of your faith. They strengthen our character and our walk with Christ. Number six, if Jesus is in your boat, you have nothing to fear. It is almost funny that the disciples had seen Jesus' power demonstrated through so many miracles, and that same Jesus was in their boat, and they still were afraid. Is Jesus in your boat? Then you have nothing to fear. Again, I must ask, is Jesus in your boat? Number seven, only in the storm do we truly understand who Jesus is. He calmed the storm in Mark 4. In, every, in the very next chapter, he healed a demon-possessed man and raised to life a dead girl. He proved his authority over creation, over demonic forces, and over death. Colossians 1, 15 to 7 declares, The Son is an image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones of power or rulers of authority, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and he is and in, in him all things hold together. Make sure that Jesus, our wonderful Lord and Savior, is in your boat. Make sure he's in your life. Make sure he's in your DNA. Make sure that every step you take, he's there. Every decision you make is his decision. Every thought you keep captive is held by him. Amen. Lay your worries and your stress and your pain at his feet. 
God has never forsaken you, and he will be the last man standing. Trust mm -hmm. in him, make him your Lord and King. If you do so, whatever it is that is worrying you will seem so small and petty in light of his grace upon you. His love for you never fails. Mm -hmm. My wife, one of my wife's favorite scriptures, Philippians 4, 67. To close, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands God over your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus, is yours. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. So as always, again today, I'm saying to you, what is it that is bothering you in life? What is it that is challenging you in life? What is it that makes you function, respond? What is it that made you come to church this morning? What is it that makes you do whatever you do? How you do it? and how you get through it. And today I said to you, the only way to get through it is with Jesus in your boat, with Jesus in your heart. You have to decide all of him and none of you, all of God's kingdom and none of the world. If you go back to the Acts church, those people truly showed what is required for you to be truly in the kingdom. If you're not sure, go and read it. But not everybody's expected to give up everything because some of us must still work, some of us must still feed, some of us must still help the church to accomplish its things to do happen. But we have to define the line between what is for me and what is for the kingdom. Amen? But first you have to fix yourself. First you have to add Jesus in truth. And understand it. Then you add the word and understand it. And then you perform the act that God has given you to perform. Without question. Don't ask who am I. Don't ask what does God want. Seek first the kingdom of him. Seek first him and he will reveal himself to you in ways you could never imagine. Let's pray. And whilst we pray, pray for God to strengthen you. Pray for God into your heart if he's not there. Pray for him to rekindle the flame. Pray for him to lift you up and bring you back to the place of worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the strength that you give us. We thank you for the calm and the storm that you bring into our lives. Father, thank you that we can have the wisdom to deal with everything in your power, not in our own power, Father, that everything will be a decision based on your way, Father, not our way, not a quick decision, but a calculated, prayerfully taken decision, Father. I ask that every single person here will be ready to see the light and understand what it would take to go into your kingdom and fully become that that you have destined us to be, Father. I thank you. I give you the glory, and each one of us right now in a moment of silence, let's bring our prayer and petition before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Father, that you continue to raise me, strengthen me, give me the wisdom to deal with those who are not able to follow, to be able to spread your word, Father, to preach your word, to give that love that you desire for me to give, Father. I thank you. I give you the glory and honor. Praise your name, Jesus. Sarabihanda Rabustuburu, Yala Bogunduru, Bustubu, Bavanda Rabastri, Yala. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for brothers and sisters. I thank you for like minded people, Father. I thank you for people that I can go to and ask to help, to strengthen. Thank you for those you put in my life that I can help, that I can strengthen, that I can feed and care for. The love of a brother and a sister in Christ. 
Give me the boldness to speak your word mm. and bring more brothers and sisters into the kingdom mm. in salvation as you come on. Give me obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, family. Have a blessed week. Uh, thank you, Bishop. Let's let hands for Bishop for the work. Thank you so much uh, for the work. Who is in your pot? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not going to explain it because. Uh,